have it. Hey, 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 everybody. Uh, it's that time again. Uh, frame of reference coming together. My name is Antoine Hallman Sr., and I'm here with my friend, my brother, uh, Raul LaBresh. Raul the Fresh LaBresh, right? That's right. I'm so fresh. I'm like a can of freshly picked up Del Monte beans. Yes, I am. You open me up. You open up that can and go, whoa, that is a fresh bean. That is a fresh bean in so many ways. That's right? Fresh so, fresh. There it is. Oh, my God. That's, I just blew the, the sound stuff right off the spectrum here. So we're going to have to go back and probably go, what the heck was he doing? Because he just clipped that baby out like nobody's business. So, Right. And, and yeah, y'all, in the course, uh, you know, frame of reference coming together, you know, of course, you got a, a old white guy, old black guy coming together, just uh, really uh, sharing. Uh, we both uh, strive for uh, unity and loving people, but also we bring uh, together different um, vo- points of view on some things. And uh, we hope to be an example of what it would look like when different groups, people with different ideologies, backgrounds, uh, races, colors, creeds, whatever, religions, even can just uh, come in and, and not just to say, oh, we agree to disagree, but to actually talk it out, to talk it out, to say, hey, you know, I, I hear your point. And then and, and, and even be able to admittedly say, hey, yeah, I, I used to think this way about a thing. I, I did not know that. And even just to say, yeah, wow, I've uh, been wrong. You know, of course, I. Uh, and that, and it's just a, this is we we strive for this just to be the beginning of some great conversation in our area in our country about Amen. just uh, coming together. Amen. And so of course, no, uh, Raul, uh, my brother, he had uh, came up with a great uh, topic for today: uh, double standards. <laughs> Double standard. Oh, uh, double. double. Standard. There's no double, double standard, standard here. No we that. treat no everyone standard. fairly. <laughs> what are you talking? <laughs> double standards? No, 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 no. You know, and that's kind of the thing about double standards, isn't it? Right from the get-go, we don't want to admit that they exist. You know, it's just... That, uh, that is- it's a it's a really weird deal. Like they can be going on, they can be festering like some pussy wound for years, and we just we kind of say, oh no, no, pay no attention to that pussy wound. It doesn't really exist. Uh, and it can, and the double standards can become uh, so ingrained in the fabric of a culture or a situation or a company or whatever it may be that is just overlooked. I'll give you an example. I worked for a food distributor for a lot of years. And of course, you know, the super duper top performers, <laughs> they didn't have to come in from wherever territory they were in, in their sales region to the sales meetings. And of course, that thing is like, hey, if you're selling, uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> or like, you know, like say, is that a good super, that really, really good athlete? You know, it's like uh, we're in the middle of football training camp right now. So it's like a lot of the veterans or a lot of the great, really, really good players, they tend to take uh, practices off and the soul will let it slide. You know, and then it's like it's just uh, so many different uh, forms of a uh, double standard in these uh, groups today. In uh, that LaBresh, uh fashion, I uh, found a definition for a double standard. Yeah, there's a there's a. a, a... A lot of ways to define, but, you know, we think of uh, if you've got a standard that is, you know, agreed upon, let's say the standard is we're not going to talk dirty. Okay, we're not going to use nasty words. Our, our, Our rule in this family, you know, mom sets it out, dad sets it out. We will not use language like that. And then there's one relative that just has a foul mouth, has always had a foul mouth, and, uh, you know, everyone just kind of takes it in and says, you know, well, that's uncle, whatever, or aunt, blah, blah, blah. They just talk that way. Um, mm-hmm. There's, there's in lies a double standard that um, all of a sudden as a kid, you may sit back and go, well, wait a minute, we can't talk like that. Why can uncle so-and-so talk that way? Or why, why does aunt such and such get away with behaving like that? Um, well, cause they're them. Okay. And I, the thing that I was thinking what you were talking before is double standards are so interesting because when it's us, 
that gets the advantage of the double standard, we're cool with it. When it's somebody else that gets the advantage of it, it's absolutely the worst thing that's ever happened in the history of humankind, right? So yeah. you sit back and think, all right, so part of the reason we have and allow, I think, double standards is because we know we have some that we take advantage of. I mean, I get to get in the front of the line at certain events because, you know, I know the guy that takes tickets. So, and that drives everyone behind me absolutely bananas, but yeah, it's their problem. They got to wait in line too bad for them. So, but if we're in that line watching that, Oh boy, you know, look out. Right. Yeah. So that double standard, like, you know, of course, uh, we know basically judging our own behavior compared to the behavior of others, especially like you say, when it benefits us, you know, it's like, if you were standing in that line, you'd be like, Hey, but it's uh, you going to the front of the line. It's like, oh, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, and, but yeah, that's. No, go ahead. And, uh, that's uh, and, and of course, basically, it's just simply a hey, uh, a rule or a principle which is unfairly applied in different ways to different people or groups. You know, it's a general definition of it, and uh, we see that play out in the legal system. We see it play out uh, amongst uh, corporations and companies and employers uh, in schools. Uh, and just uh, society as uh, in general, you know, we, we see it. And uh, but again, it, it's, you know, with the uh, within the context of our podcast here, you know, we're talking about, you know, it, along the lines of race and, and uh, equity and uh, even like, say, judicial. Let's uh, look at uh, what's happening in the news. You know, we got a very popular person that's uh, being uh, indicted on multiple charges in multiple places. And, you know, of course, there's probably people sitting in prison or sitting in jail waiting right now. Like, hey, <laughs> why am I out uh, just uh, moving around in uh, the same thing? You know what I mean? Right. So it's like uh, these things, uh, these double stand, and it, it, they're so blatant sometimes that it's just, uh, again, it's just where, where we are right now. So let there be any fuzziness on this whole thing. I took the cue and looked up double standard on my handy dandy internet device. And it says... <laughs> A double standard is the application of different sets of principles for situations that are, in principle, the same. It's often used to describe treatment whereby one group is given more latitude. In most cases, to certain ethnicities being judged more harshly than others. Well, well, well. Now, isn't there about 16 weeks worth of conversations right there? And again, oh, I will yeah, point we... out the double standards, what makes them so powerful is we don't want to admit that they exist. We do yeah, not. You know, we talked about this uh, in our first couple of podcasts when we were talking about, uh, you know, white privilege. Yeah. You know, uh, it, if that is not a double standard in a sense, you know, and where it's like where we – status or race versus the other same exact set of rules same exact set of principles but this person is going to get the automatic upper hand just because of the color of their skin yeah yeah and if and, you uh, don't if you don't want to admit that it exists because I, I think where a lot of folks that i know get hung up is when you talk about things like white privilege, they immediately put it to their lives and want to rationalize that, well, I don't have white privilege. I, I had to work for everything I have. I, I'm, you know, I'm hard work. I don't want people getting something for doing nothing, you know. So tell me what privileges I have. And the, the problem with that article, uh, that, that argument, honestly, is that we cannot know. We have to, as white people, I think we have to come to grips with the fact that we cannot know what white privilege looks like because we're white. You know, it's just, it's like saying, um, you know, I know what stupid people are and, you know, who they are, but I'm not stupid. I, well, you know, just uh, look at it from a, a, a treatment standpoint. You know, you uh, like, say, a person uh, just... Say you are the white person in in the line and the person is taking care of you with your items in the checkout and then there's a person of color behind you. Turn around and see if they get the same treatment you do. Yeah. That'd be a great indicator. You know, indicator. Just uh, turn around and see if they get the same treatment you do. Right. Well, take about and, uh, walking along the streets. Any any you know, ladies that are out there, tell me if you are walking along the street and you see a black man coming along the opposite direction. Do you respond differently than you would if it was a white guy? You know, mm. statistically, you're probably in more danger with the white guy because there's a higher percentage overall of, you know, 
problems there if you take it across the spectrum. But it's also more dangerous because you're probably not going to be looking for it in terms of the, the trouble coming up. Um, it's a it's a tough nut for people to crack and realize, you know, I have no way of knowing what white privilege looks like. I just don't. It's like me saying, I know exactly how a woman feels. Oh, my God, sweetheart, I know exactly how you feel. You want to have a big problem with a woman? Tell them that once. You know, tell, tell right. them you know exactly <laughs> how they feel. You will find yourself in a whole lot of trouble. And rightly so, because I don't know. As a man, I can never know completely. And I got to fess up to that and, and deal with it and be compassionate and say, I, I, I can't understand. I, I wish I could. I don't understand what you're going through. But please, please help me to help you. Please help me to understand more of it um, so that I can maybe see it a little bit better, more clearly. Yeah. I don't know. And it's like, you know. Yeah, you know, it was like I said a, a little bit ago, just like uh, you know, when we talk about double standards, they're so deeply ingrained in the fabric of the country is that when you call it out, you know, rather than again admitting that there may be a, a person can know it's wrong, but uh, in today's world, we'll double down on the lie and and get angry versus just saying, yeah, I was wrong on that, or I do acknowledge that. And that's where we are as a country, as a people right now. You know, it's like uh, that double standard, that privilege or whatever uh, up people want, whatever upper hand they can get in, in this uh, in this stage of the country. I say, you know, of course, um, we just uh, have to get back to the unity piece. We got to get back to the loving people piece of things, because, you know, like when we actually you know, remove double standards, these uh, hypocrite, hypocritical ways, you know, if we remove all those things, you know, we actually come into loving people, we come into unity, equity and inclusion and all these other things will actually become automatic, you know? And I think uh, if we can just simply uh, admit faults, admit wrongs, and, and, and we, we'd be on the right track to things. But, you know, again, these double standards, you know, they're to the benefit of some and not to others, you know? And of course, like when you point out again, you point out that double standard that you get a, 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 a ton of what abouts? Well, what about this? What about that? What about and it's like, yeah, what about it? You know, but the thing is, I'm pointing out this one thing that is actually wrong and we both know it's wrong. But yet you want to have the audacity to defend the point. And but then again, it's like, you know, then you can't really argue the point because, you know, there's an old saying, it's like, uh, don't argue with a fool because the people from afar won't know who the fool is. <laughs> So you just you and again, it's just you get what we see in is people just get ground into some form of submission and the double standards stand or they just go like, oh, well, ain't no use of me trying to deal with that, you know, and that's where we are. I saw a meme a while back that said, don't argue with stupid people because they'll wear you down to their level. And then they'll beat you with experience. So, uh, <laughs> boy, that's uh, doesn't that answer a lot of issues? But uh, no, and I don't know, you know, to I don't know how to argue anymore with people that just don't want to get it. You know, it's just I don't know that we we do ourselves any service by arguing with someone that is completely shut down to looking at things in a different light to understand that, um, you know, the world is not just as I see it. The world is a place with many different viewpoints. The play, the world is a place with many different backgrounds and, you know, ethnicities, nations, um, and all of those rightfully so have developed their own perspective, sometimes on a national level, sometimes on an individual level, sometimes on a group or a culture level. And those are all valid. So I don't understand and I don't know how to get past the fact that we can just acknowledge that this is how I see it, but that's just how I see it. And where we really grow, where we learn it and, and really start to feel like life is bigger than me or you or whatnot, is when we share that in a respectful way and then learn the other person's perspective in a respectful way. And we find the commonalities. We find the, the things that are similar 
we find the things that are uh, universally accepted as being important. You know, it's uh, I, I don't think I don't think there's a big problem with getting this. So when we talk about these words like inclusion, and some people are like, oh God, inclusion! I'm so tired of hearing about inclusion. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, maybe you don't like the way it's been presented, but the idea of conclusion, inclusion, is really a wonderful thing. If everyone felt that they could be included in whatever is going on, that, and I'm not talking about participation awards, okay? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being welcomed into the group and being respected for having something valid to offer. And the best part about uh, that's a great point there, Ralph. And when we talk about inclusion, just uh, like you say, take a different mindset on it. Like, what can I learn? What can I learn? What can I apply to my life to make it better? You know, and of course, we, when you were just talking, you made another great point. You know, it's like we, I guess when we talk about how do you argue with someone with a different viewpoint? And it, it is, it's, you're right. It's almost like you, you, you just want to give up, like, you know, it ain't no use. But it's like, you know, the Bible tells us, you know, it's a, in Romans 12, uh, starting around verse 9 or 10. It says, like, yield to one another in brotherly kindness. Yield. No one wants to yield, even if it's just to say, OK, I'm, I'm going to hear you out. No one wants to do that. And 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 that's where it, we have to at least get to that stage where you'll hear the other person out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You think about yielding and uh, and traffic detours or, you know, when lanes have to merge. And it's so interesting to me because, I, you know, you watch and the vast majority of people are trying to play by the rules and merge. And, you know, a lot of them are really foresightful and can see it, you know, a mile or so down the way. And they start merging right away. They get it. They know this is the deal. You know, and as you're getting down there to the last, you know, 10 cars worth of length to everybody getting into one lane, some Yahoo or a series of Yahoos will come streaming down the road on the shore shoulder and push themselves right into the point where you can't you have to let them in and i i, I just i swear to god i want so much to have like a steel beam on the bottom of my car that i can press a button and that thing will flip out with a like a gate and just cause their whole car to just like stop and, and have them flip out and i you know i just have this vision of either that or a laser blaster where i can just go kapow and their whole car just goes boom because it's just such a they don't yield they don't know they think there's a double standard i don't have to wait i'm much too important i have an important appointment to get to well thanks I, I, yahoo i gotta get to where i'm going faster than you do right right i have a nicer car can't you see with my nice car i'm not the kind of person that waits and and that doesn't i mean you can be in a vo beat up volkswagen and have the same mentality i i you know don't mean to make it anything other than a mindset that says i don't have to wait I don't have to participate. I don't, these rules don't apply to me because uh, there's a double standard, right? And, 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 you know, it's like when you were talking about that last part, you gave me a PTSD because every time I'm on my way to the office in Appleton on 41 South, you know, at a certain point, just a few miles up the road, you start to get these signs saying the left lane is going to end. And, but for some reason that is the, okay, I'm, I'm, I gotta get in front of you lane. It's like, it's like you're trying to jump six or seven cars instead of just falling on in line. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Like the on-ramps too. You know, there's the people that wait their turn and come in behind the traffic. And there's those people that just zip in there and they're going to get, even if there's inches between you and them, they just, they're pulling right in front of you and they're going to, they're getting on the freeway, get out of my way. And I, you just, you wonder what that's the, that's the part of our brains that has to somehow be suspended so that we can say, you know what? Yeah, there's going to be yahoos. There's, there's goofballs that break the rules. It just is, but I'm not going to be that guy. I'm not going to be that person. Um, right. And you know where this, and, and it's, it's amazing, you know, of course, like how, you know, we, we talk about like say double standard and you just quick uh, flip, talk about entitlement, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the, the biggest behavior of biggest behaviors of entitlement I get is from older people. Typically, you say, oh, it's the younger generation. They feel so entitled. No, <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I get it from older people. Wait a minute. I'm older. 
Does that mean I'm entitled to stuff that I'm not been? Cl- yeah. Well, you know, think about it all the, the, I, my 10% off coffee at McDonald's, you know, or whatever the, the, the or dollar, co- I forget that I keep seeing these articles. I guess they know now that I'm in my sixties, keep seeing these things, you know, it, those, those senior benefits that you probably don't know about. And it's like, Oh, okay. I mean, I went to the grocery store not too long ago and realized that Wednesday was seniors day. So I could save 10% on all my groceries. And the girl that there says, are you a senior? And I'm like, Oh, bless you. Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> so, but you know, it's that, it's that, that feel the need that they don't have to wait. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's what I, well, they deserve it, it right? They deserve it. That's that whole entitlement idea is I deserve this. I worked hard, whatever. Um, and now I'm going to make sure that I get every single thing coming to me. And, and I'm not talking about senior citizens like, you know, like a 70 plus. But I'm talking about that that in our age range, that 50 to 70 ish, late 60s, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Where it's just uh, it's like I'm just going to bogart my way through this. <laughs> I'm just, you know, uh, it's like I don't know how many times I'll be in Whitman's. I'm like, I'm, st- you, I'm like and it's like. You see me standing in this line, right? Yeah. You know, oh, well, oh I didn't. I'm like, you thought I wasn't going to say anything. Yeah. yeah. And, and and then it's like, uh, but yeah, it's like these double standards, you know, they're, they're a part of, they're a part of our lives, but. What's the double the, standard that drives you the most nuts, Antoine? Well, again, it's the differential treatments, you know, like uh, I'll use uh, this popular food store as an example. You know, again, it's like a in line, you know. The, just a differential treatment, but one t- one instance in particular, and and my my wife and I both experienced this on in different weeks, same thing, different weeks, where you pay for something with cash, it, like you'll see the person in front of you, they'll pay, money is put right, the money is taken from their hand, put back in their hand, the money is taken, I, I put the money in the cashier's hand and she sets it on the counter or she sets it on the floor, and I'm like, I, I, I put the money in your hand. Can you put it back in mine? I got to you know now I got to fumble around trying to grab coins off of this surface when you could have just put it in my hand. And, and so it's just those forms of differential treatment is uh is where it, it just kind of burns my toast. And then again, but, you know, it's like um, it, it, it's some of these things are so deliberate and intentional that they are to get a reaction. And then it's like it, they want the reaction to justify the stereotype. And so that's where it just I have to be mindful of. And so it just it's just one of those things that he's like, wow, the person intended to do this to get a desired impact It's almost like an antagonization, antagonizing type of behavior mm-hmm. is. Uh, so, I, I, you know, we get the most of that in customer service. You know, like I, I mentioned this uh, at an event in uh, Salt County once, how. There's a couple of places in a certain city that my wife and I, we just would never go back to because of how we were treated there. You know, and of course, uh, and of course, I, I, I greatly want to put those places on blast, but in a court of law to be my word against theirs, <laughs> our word against theirs. Oh, yeah. And, but it's like, yeah. And so it's like, and then, of course, and then uh, someone was like, yeah, they can get you for uh, slander, too. And it's like, oh, okay, see, I, I ain't finna try to go to a court battle just to point out know how crappy this ownership and their staff is yeah yeah (laughs) well and and then that because you are trying to be respectful and protect yourself then it becomes a well it never happened then because you won't say where it happened so it didn't happen it's like well exactly there's more to it right exactly and and of course again it's like uh, nothing better in the world and i would love to call out you know uh some nonsense like that right and uh and just maybe uh one day I just may. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, because and- again, it's like I, I say I, I, this. This just you know, I, I jokingly say this, but it, it's like I, I could you know when a person you no know, kind of I'm I'm not easily offended. You know, I don't care what you say or do to me, but just leave my wife alone. Mm-hmm. Don't disrespect my wife. Don't hurt my wife. You know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. I don't care what you say or do to me, but don't grieve my wife. That's where the problems start. I'm gonna say. Hmm. Until you uh, disrespect my wife. Yeah. Well, you know. And he's still working on me on that. So and there's uh, a. It's interesting because, the you know, like I mentioned the whole um, deal with we can't know what it is for women either. Um, I, was, I had my hair cut 
actually all of them i did have all i was gonna just have one cut and i thought oh i'm here i'll just have all of them cut and um so the the, the uh woman that does my haircuts is just uh she's a younger gal i think about the same age as my son so maybe mid late 20s and um she was telling me how she was had just taken a trip to Mexico and there were all these guys that were telling her, oh, you be careful now in Mexico, you know, pretty girl like you, you be careful. And she said, you know, multiple guys said that to me and it really bothered me. And I said, really, why? And she said, well, because being in the United States is scarier than going to Mexico. I mean, I'm probably, I feel more at risk at danger in the United States than I do there. And then on top of that, who are they to say I should be careful? You know what? I'm not their property that they have to make sure I'm taken care of so that I come back to them. And I thought, boy, that, you know, I never would have thought ever that I would have thought that that would be taken that way. But again, hello, duh, I can't know what it's like just like my my daughter taught me years ago too I, there was a some guys doing construction work at our neighbors next door and she had asked them to do something and they just okay 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 well then when i got home at lunchtime she told me about the whole thing and i said okay let me go talk to him i went and talked to him and sure enough they did right away what she had been asking them to do but because she you know had two of those and one of them and you're yeah. like what what is the deal so it's everywhere it, it's everywhere. And just like the the same, uh, I guess the same men that were telling uh, that young lady to be careful in Mexico was probably telling the young fellas, go get them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just go have man, man. Yeah. Don't hold back. Go have fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it, it's just, it speaks to just how ingrained that stuff is. I don't, I don't think anyone meant anything by it. I mean, I don't know, I guess. I don't think necessarily meant anything nasty, but we don't have the perspective. You know, it, it we don't understand what it's like to be in the position where you're constantly dealt these slights that in and of themselves maybe aren't such a big deal, but you start compounding the interest on those slights and it becomes a big deal. And we have to respect that because I, you know, my, I think one of my pet peeves is um, pe not feeling uh, respected, not feeling like I'm included in decisions or whatnot, or, you know, that I'm some, I, I get this a lot where I'm kind of, kind of downrated because of my theater background, you know, so I'm, I'm so such an emotional guy, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I am. I mean, we're all emotional. So what you're not emotional, you know, you're one of those automaton guys that keeps it all inside because you're strong. And then it comes out in some weird display of anger, frustration, you know, you kick the dog or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> But it just, it always bugs me because it's when you tr use somebody's personal traits as a reason to put them down, it's, you know, and what what is this, you know, racism thing about? It's a personal trait that, you know, your skin is black, so I should put you down because of that. I should, yeah, I should treat you differently because of that. Uh, what? Really? Seriously? What is that? I I don't get it. I mean, what is what is wrong with us that we can use something as as really inconsequential overall? I mean, the color of a person's skin should be relatively like, do they have a beard or not? I mean, really, at the end of the day, because it tells you virtually nothing. I mean, I think a beard tells you more about a person than whether or not they're black or white. Honestly, I mean, I could, you know, say, well, he wants to take care of that every day. Ooh, okay, good, good deal. Yeah, all right. Or what's under that beard, buddy? So, uh, but when, I, I, so I don't get it. It's like, why, why did we pick that? Why? Yeah. It, you know, it's like when we were talking about a second ago about how do we deal with uh, double standards, you know, and that's just, uh, again, it's a, uh, how do we deal with it? You know, and it's like. Call them out. You know, going but it's, it's like, you know, we have to have, you know, it starts with us having some, like, say, regardless of the situation, there has to be some kind of clarity on the purpose of why we're here, why we're doing this thing. You know, we you know um, I've kind of prayed about like uh, our theme for next year. And uh, it's like uh, going to be talking about doing life together. 
And uh, so that's a, one of the possibilities that I'm thinking about. But doing life, you know, we as white, black, green, yellow, blue, purple, whatever, uh, doing life together, having clarity of purpose, right? Having a clear purpose of why we're here. And then it's like, you know, what are we are what are we supposed to do while we're here? What are we doing for the collective good of people? And I, I just want to, if we can simplify some things in this life, I think we can kind of get rid of the double standards of manipulation and 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 just these other kind of things, you know. And it's just going to start with uh, people willing to, you know, we got two ears and one mouth, right? It, which one did God intend you to use more? Mm. <laughs> Reason? Like, so, because you know, like we're in a space and time where, like, again, like uh, you can point out some obvious double standards, and people will take offense that you pointed it out. You know, of course, we were talking about this a couple weeks ago as well. It's like, you know, when you point out a problem, you become the issue, <laughs> right? Right. And and that's what we are. You know, it's like, uh, how dare you tell me I'm wrong when I know I'm wrong, but I'm going to keep doing what I know is wrong because it benefits me. But you yet you point out to me that I'm doing uh, wrong to benefit me. And how dare you do that? I just read a story about that. There was some research done in the 50s. Um, and it's, it's where the, the uh, idea of cognitive dissonance came up. So look that up sometime, cognitive dissonance. And what happens is they, they found that people who had aligned themselves, and they used the example of doomsday preachers, that there have been recurrent issues where a doomsday preacher will come out and will say, the world is going to end on July 15th, 1988. And July 18th comes along, or 15th comes along, and the world doesn't end. So most people, a lot of people at that point will say, oh, it's a crackpot. But there are also people that have invested a lot of time and energy in that person, in that ministry, in that you know, preparing themselves, they've gotten the doomsday kits or whatever, or they've prepared their family, shut themselves off from friends that they don't want to have attachments to because the end is coming. And then it doesn't happen. So then you have this thing called cognitive dissonance, where the thing that you built all of this belief on doesn't happen. And it, if you're going to deal with the fact that that didn't happen, it takes a lot of work because you have to go, to yourself somehow, wow, why did I believe that? What was I thinking? What, what else has been wrong here? How else have I made mistakes here? There's a lot of soul searching that goes in. And instead of doing that, we'll, we will, a large percent of, a, of us will say, well, pastor, something must have gone wrong. You must have been, well, so the end of the world is coming. When do you think it's coming? Did we get the date wrong? Were we doing something wrong that the Lord didn't bring the last day? And he says, yes, the Lord revealed to me that we did have the wrong day. The real date is February 18th, 2022. And then we wait again for it to happen. And then when it happens, it doesn't happen again. Now you've got an even more hunkering down group of people that are convinced that it's not because the person that's spewing out this stuff is wrong. It's because something else is happening to make it not happen. Wow. And that's a great point. You know, of course, like uh, people use uh, those kind of double standards and in, in arguments to manipulate others and get them so defensive. And so I don't know how to say defensive and committed, um, but deluded, they lose sight of what the actual argument was about or yeah. what the actual purpose of the conversation was about. Right. You know? Right. I mean, a little kid so, comes wow. in and says, Dad, 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 there's a rapid wolf outside. You know, and you go outside and there's no wolf to be found anywhere. And says, no, Dad, he was here, he was here. Well, he's not here now. And you go back in the house and a couple of days later, Dad, Dad, there's a mad wolf outside. You go out again, there's no mad wolf. You know, you're like, uh, Billy, we need to have a talk about what a mad wolf looks like and stop coming in and telling me unless there's really a mad wolf. Well, then, you know, three days later, there is a mad wolf comes running and saying, Dad, Dad, there's a mad wolf. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go away. Go away. And the kid gets eaten. Right. I mean, it's you've heard this story in a different realm, mm -hmm. um, but it is the same deal that it's interesting that we we don't have any problem with those simple tales. 
But we get sucked up in things all the time. Amway, I probably shouldn't say that. But, you know, they're, they're, it's used as a joke a lot of times. But there are product lines that people become committed to. They invest a whole bunch of money in it. And then when Stump comes out to say that's really not as good as they're saying it is, you oh, those, those studies are just biased. Those are That's done by researchers that don't know what they're talking about. This stuff is excellent. I've used it for years, and it's wonderful. Well, if we've got that kind of cognitive dissonance over a shampoo or whatever, uh, imagine how much more cognitive dissonance we're going to experience when it's a person that we've identified that we feel identifies with us and understands our fears and our concerns and, you know, what, what's important to us. How much harder is it to turn away from that and say, you're wrong and I was wrong for following you time to move on well we're, we're living that out right now brother when we look at uh what's happening in on the news and in this uh current political environment you know where yeah a person won't admit they're wrong and a person won't admit they're wrong for following and well you've you eliminated know. all of the things that would help right fake media so well now how are we supposed to know what's really going on where is, where is the non-fake media? The non-fake media is the stuff that I agree with. That's non-fake. Well, I mean, I've had that argument with friends of mine in many instances where said, well, that's one side that you're getting. What about the other side? How do you know they're not, there's some truth on that side too? How do you know, oh, they're just a bunch of liars. Well, that's convenient, isn't it? To just wipe it all off that way. But the, uh, what's the old Emerson phrase? The vehemence of my opponent's argument convinces me that I am perhaps just a little bit wrong and he is perhaps a little bit right. So I, I don't know how else to typify that, but if you can't admit that, I don't know the whole thing. I haven't, I do not know what's in Donald Trump's mind. I do not know what is in John, Joe Biden's mind. I do not know. I cannot know. And if I'm going to say build a whole spectrum of hates and angers and vehemence and, you know, nastiness based on something I can't know. I mean, how silly is that? Think about it for a second. How silly is that? When I have you right in front of me, I can't know. I, you know, I can't know what you've experienced, what African-Americans experience on a daily basis. I cannot know that. But I can know you. I can get to know you and I can share, you can share your experiences with me. I can hopefully understand. I can, you know, it's not like it's, I have to say, oh my God, on behalf of all white people, I'm so sorry, Antoine. I can't do that either, but I can say I will do what I can. I want to do what I can because what's happening to you and to I in this country is not good. It's not right. We're Americans, darn it. We can do better than this. We can. And, and it's like uh, it's almost like when it comes to these uh, double standards, you know, what is actually behind it? You know, uh, what uh, mental capacity is behind it? What agenda is behind it? What uh, strategy is behind it? It's just what is going on in the background that you just don't know about. Selling more because Big again, Macs. Like I say, you. Yeah, selling more you, big you, mats. That's what's behind it. So we're gonna. No, sorry. I'm. <laughs> no, yeah, you, that's fine. But you know what I mean. It's like you know, there's all. It's almost there's a an intent uh, behind this thing. Because again, like if we both can say, hey, that, wow, that's wrong. But another person, like say, two people can say a thing is wrong. They they both know it's wrong, but the other person will defend that wrong versus the other person will say, why don't you just call it out for what it is. And and that's where we kind of where we are. And and rather than admit that we're wrong, you know, of course, there's uh, that pride of life where we say, you know what, I, you know, a person won't say I've been a I've been an idiot for doing this or that or the other for the last uh, 10, 20 years or whatever. No, they, they'll they they'll double down on the fact that they that's that's this was who I am and what I do. And right. versus just saying, wow, I was wrong. Yeah, pulling out all kinds of research articles that support what you believe. Um, you know, I, I, this is scary of what's to come, too. Um, I follow a little bit, probably should look at it more, but the whole idea of artificial intelligence and 
um, Google has a new product that they're they have in beta testing right now called Bard. And so Bard, like Shakespeare, the great Bard, right? Bard is designed and is capable of having read basically everything anywhere. I mean, I don't know if you remember a while back, Google did a thing with mm. um, basically scanning any book that they could get a hold of, scanning it in and becoming Google Books. And so that getting that wealth, that reservoir has now enabled them, they had a long-term plan, I'm sure, to develop this AI product. And the AI product is so sophisticated already that the uh, interviewer was able to ask I, I should go back and look at this. There, there was a, a series of events where he just gave like three words or five words, and the AI was able to tell the story of what those, those five words were about and turned it into a poem. And he had just, you know, different ways of telling the prose of it. And the, the AI came up with a, in, an incredible, you know, story that explained that sentence. And then it came up with a poem that explained that sen sentence. But the scary one, scariest one was that there was a research paper that it presented that quoted articles that did not exist, quoted mm. research that had never happened. So it was so sophisticated that it not only came up with a bunch of lies, but it came up <laughs> with sophisticated uh, support for those lies. And Did he, you hear about the lawyer that uh, used AI to create a deposition or something like that? Yeah. It based the, the AI uh, based it on court cases that did not exist or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly the same <laughs> idea. So, and they, they, you know, talk about those things as being, you know, things that they have to sort out in the programming. But, I mean, at, at some point, we have to kind of take a look at, at ourselves and say, okay, well, computers figured out that we do this all the time. So <laughs> they've got access to all of the media and all of the subject matter out there. So let's say, oh, uh, it seems like, lie. you know, having factual basis to your, you know, your references is really inconsequential. We just come up with things and make it sound intelligent enough and people will buy that it, it's real research. So, and oh, wow. I mean, we brought that out ourselves. So there are researchers that are out there making up false conclusions and, you know, statisticians that are saying, well, three out of four people recommend that you use blah 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 and it's like well which three out of four people did you test and you know was it where did you screen them ahead of time and say do you like this yeah i do okay well you can be in the, te the test then so i it's just so easy to manipulate the truth to fit what you want it to fit and there again the yeah. double standard it's okay for me to yeah. modify the truth because i have a good purpose in doing that and then, and of course, uh, the state of Florida is a perfect example of that. Oh, they gosh. want to modify the truth of the history of slavery and say that, oh, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a privilege uh, for black people. It was a, a build, skill building and all these different kind of things. And it's, it's amazing how we can put a spin on a thing to make it fit how we want it to do, how we want it to be. But, you know, again, it's like, uh, you know, when we're talking about double standards, you know, it's just like. I guess, uh, well, I don't want to say I guess, I know that these things, they have to be, we have to start meeting them head on. We have to meet them in a, the most intelligent way without, because uh, again, a person will argue 10 ways around Sunday to get you off of the actual point. And, and that's where we are, like, you know, with, like double standards in schools that, that be, this just can't exist anymore. You know, double, uh, double standards in uh, voting rights. It just can't exist anymore. You know, even look at uh, how the now, like with the, the, the colleges and universities, they uh, stopped uh, uh, affirmative action based admissions, but yet they still want to keep legacy admissions. You know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's these things. They have to be, met head on and and that's where i am you know i just like i, I don't want to be the angry black guy in the room all the time but it's like it's like you can't help but call out the wrong you know and yes and am i gonna be that brunt of the depending on who i'm around i'm gonna catch it from some but but most you'd like to think that uh reasonable minds will prevail or just uh open minds will just uh listen to reason i mean and that's where I am. Uh, you know, of course, a lot of these things, they're just uh, that double standard, that sense of entitlement. You know, I'm wrong. You're wrong. I'm right. That 
narcissistic personality disorder that we see is like a person will argue you down. Uh, they'll ground you into dust to prove that point. And we just uh, we have to stop letting stuff slide, so to speak. I mean, but we have to figure out a way to do it the right way. Like you were saying earlier, you know, it's like, how do we deal with this? You know, and so it, I guess that's that's my prayer going into, uh, you know, later this week. Just, uh, Lord, how do we deal with dealing with double standards? <sighs> well, I'll call them out, right? Look for them. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't um, I don't pretend to see all the double standards that are in front of me. And I would like to be able to see them. Um, C.S. Lewis has a wonderful book where he talks about um, it's basically an analogy of the people uh, on a ship to heaven. And um, when they when they're on the trip, they, you know, initially, you know, the, the light is so bright and it's painful and they, they step out onto the grass and the grass leaves are so sharp and just just so uncomfortable walking on and they're just oh my god this can't be heaven this is terrible this is oh my gosh we're going to suffer forever and ever but as time goes on the grass becomes the most pleasant silky wonderful comfortable cool fresh wonderful grass ever and the sun becomes this incredibly beautifully warming perfect you know beacon of light that it makes everything rich in color and saturates and you know just this wonderful analogy about how we would see heaven through our earthly eyes and as time goes along learn to see it with heavenly eyes. And I, th I see that with our, I think, you know, I, I hope our discussions are kind of a, a way to kind of see things differently, to be able to understand that what seems so uncomfortable is just part of walking towards what we can be. It's, it's part of embracing what has been and and realizing what has been and turning to see something better, even though it might not seem like it's better at first, but it's the right thing. So just move towards it. I don't know. I'm doing and a lousy hurt. job. So no, no, no. Healing, healing hurts, right? Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. healing hurts. You, 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 I, uh, burn myself with some uh, cooking oil, uh, just a little bit back. And, uh, and it just it hurt for a few days and then it itched like crazy for a few days. And it's like I'm got canthophonique and cocoa butter and all these things slathering it up. And it was just uh, very uncomfortable for a few days. But um, it's, it's, it's gotten better. Mm -hmm. And, and you're, you know, and you're like probably a, not going to not cook anymore just because you got burned with some cooking oil. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wish I could never have to cook again. But. <laughs> <laughs> you want to eat yeah cook. yeah i wouldn't mind having somebody cook for me i'm 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 all over that so but well, cooking is fun I, we too. have this thing uh, yeah my wife and i we have a thing it's pretty simple whoever get home first just start cooking you uh, know? Uh, that's a good arrangement that it's just that's yeah, a good whoever gets home first just start i would not do well at that arrangement <laughs> <laughs> I would be, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'm really tired tonight. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You played the real tired tonight for 314 days, buddy. Get in there and cook something. So yeah, that would be me. But, but hey, man, but always, always, always just uh, I feel like we scratched the tip of the iceberg. But Yeah, and it's just like, a, but you, you pose a question. How do we address and deal with them in a way that's uh, constructive and where you're not bashing a person over the head. You're not saying, look, you're wrong. It's just pointing out the difference in the behavior or the attitude or the pro just pointing that difference out in a way where it could be understood and seen. And just, uh, that's where we are. And of course that's a, you know, part of the problem with a uh, society. Now we don't know how to talk, right? <laughs> Civilly, especially. So we can we can have discussions without uh, having them turn into arguments immediately. So and being willing to accept maybe I am wrong. Maybe I am. Let me hear what you have to say. Hmm. OK. Yes. Yeah, I hadn't thought of it. If nothing else, if nothing else, you come out thinking I hadn't thought of it that way. 
Those are beautiful words. I like that, those words. I like, you know, that's a, that's a sign of a healing nation. I never thought of it that way. Hmm. 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 You, you, you take care of yourself there, okay, buddy? You take care of yourself hey, there. You too. You too, sir. And, uh, <laughs> and a happy, uh, again, happy anniversary last oh, week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. I got that going for me, too. 37 years of marriage. This woman's been married to me. What is she thinking? 37 years. Yeah, 30s. <laughs> She's probably saying to herself, it's 37 too many. So, yeah, but... I'm asking that. Yeah, yeah. She'll say, you said what? So, but <laughs> no, she has been a blessing in so many ways. I can tell you for certain I would not be a decent person in any way, shape, or form if it wasn't for her. Uh, oh, she she God, has brought man, out all the best in me, sometimes with me fighting and kicking and screaming all the way. But she has brought out the very best in me. So well, it's a man. good thing. So, yeah, just congratulations, man. Thanks, man. Uh, 37 years, man. So, congratulations. And heading strong. Hopefully I got another 37 left. But, boy, they better make me into AI before that because I don't think I'm going to be moving around much at that age. <laughs> so, all right, dude. See you next week. Next, I see it, man. Same bat time, same bat channel here on. Mm, what's our show called again? Do you remember? Frame of reference coming together. Oh yeah, that's right, coming together. You come together with us, folks. Next week, same time, same place, whatever. And uh, look for double standards. See ya. <laughs>